Simon Cowell is a name synonymous with sharp wit and brutal honesty. He is the judge who can deflate egos faster than a popped balloon, and his platform of choice is the audition stage. While hopeful performers dream of dazzling the audience and landing their big break, some end up in legendary clashes that are more hilarious or cringeworthy than heartwarming. Here is a look at some of Simon Cowell's most memorable audition clashes, Mary Roach. In 2005, a young singer named Mary Roach walked into her American Idol audition. At 18, she was brimming with confidence, or maybe it was nerves, it was hard to tell. With a twinkle in her eye, she declared she would be singing I Feel the Earth Move. Now Mary wasn't your typical contestant. Her rendition of the classic Carol King song was unique. Let's just say it involved some dance moves that would make even Mick Jagger raise an eyebrow. When the music finally stopped, the silence in the room was thicker than a layer of Simon Cowell's signature frown lines. The judges, including the ever stylish Mark McGrath, just stared, speechless. Things got a little heated after that. When Cowell, known for his brutal honesty, offered some constructive criticism about her voice, Mary wasn't having it. She launched into a hilarious, rambling explanation about how the judges all looked different in person than they did on TV. Flustered, and maybe a tad embarrassed, Mary stormed out of the audition room. Cameras caught her fuming outside, where she declared she was throwing in the towel on her singing career. But wait, there's more. In a moment of pure defiance and perhaps a touch of teenage rebellion, Mary left a very clear message for Mr. Cowell. A good, old-fashioned middle finger. Needless to say, it was an audition that went down in American Idol history, better than Madonna. This next audition wasn't so much a performance, but more of a full-blown operatic drama with a dash of mistaken identity. The self-proclaimed singing veteran named Rachel Lester, who claimed to have belted out tunes all around the towns and places for years, waltzed into the audition room with an ego that rivaled any rock star. She confidently declared herself vocally superior to the likes of Madonna herself. Then, the singing began. Let's just say it wasn't quite the showstopper Rachel envisioned. First, there was the bizarre microphone situation. Instead of letting the stand hold the mic like a civilized singer, Rachel kept making aggressive swipes at it from above, as if trying to snatch a particularly stubborn fly. Things went from slightly odd to full-on meltdown when Simon Cowell delivered his verdict. He bluntly stated that Rachel possessed a potent combination of laziness, delusion, and a severe lack of talent. This, as you might expect, did not go down well. A tirade of colorful language erupted from Rachel, directed squarely at the judge's perceived unfairness. However, the piece de resistance of this chaotic audition was yet to come. With a misplaced sense of pride, Rachel declared she had even recorded her own music, on a cassette tape no less. Sharon Osbourne, ever the quick wit, couldn't resist a playful jab. Sharon remarked that such recordings are called CDs these days. Apparently, Rachel wasn't a fan of gentle ribbing. She marched towards the judges' table, eyes blazing, ready to continue her one-woman show. The situation escalated quickly, and security eventually had to usher Rachel out of the audition room, leaving behind a trail of bewildered judges and a memory that would forever be etched in X-Factor history, Curtis Moore. We have all come to adore Simon's Powell brutally honest reactions, especially when it comes to judging singing performances. So, when he's less than impressed, he doesn't hold back. But things took an unexpected turn when a hopeful contestant, Curtis Moore, walked onto the X Factor stage. Cheryl Cole tried to break the ice with some friendly questions, but when Simon took the reins, he wasn't prepared for the teenager's attitude. Without missing a beat, Moore silenced the small talk and launched into his rendition of Mario's Let Me Love You, a soulful R&B song from the American singer Mario. Three out of four judges were vibing with his performance, with Cheryl even comparing him to Chris Brown in the swagger department. But Simon? Well, let's just say he wasn't feeling the vibe the 16-year-old was dishing out. He asks Curtis to rate his own performance, only to be met with a response that sets him off. Simon tells Curtis to zip it and cut the attitude, though he admits he sees potential in him and his swagger. So, with a stern warning to shape up, Curtis snags a ticket to the next round. Kenneth Briggs, the season premiere of American Idol is always a wild ride. It's like a chaotic talent show buffet, overflowing with all sorts of singers, some incredibly talented and others, well, let's just say they are more enthusiastic than skilled. And let's not forget the judges. They are like the show's resident food critics, with Simon Cowell as the head honcho. Anyone who has ever watched American Idol knows that Simon Cowell doesn't care who you are. 
he will tell you exactly what he thinks, no matter how mean it is. This was definitely the case during season six, when a wide-eyed contestant named Kenneth Briggs showed up to audition in Seattle. Now, Kenneth may not have been the most polished singer, but he certainly had the guts to get up there and belt out a tune in front of a national audience. Unfortunately for Kenneth, his rendition wasn't exactly hitting the right notes. As soon as Kenneth finished his song, Simon gave his opinion on Kenneth's performance. According to Simon, Kenneth's dancing was terrible. His singing was horrendous. To top it all off, Simon likened Kenneth's wide-eyed expression to that of a bush baby, a nocturnal creature known for its large, luminous eyes. One might expect Kenneth to crumble under the weight of Simon's savage critique, but Kenneth surprised everyone. He calmly told the judges that he knew Simon was going to be mean, but that it was just his opinion and he was entitled to it. Kenneth may not have gotten a golden ticket to Hollywood, but he definitely won over some viewers with his positive attitude and ability to roll with the punches and Simon's insults. Chloe Victoria. In 2010, a 19-year-old named Chloe Victoria walked onto the X Factor UK stage without a care in the world. With makeup plastered on her face like she was painting a masterpiece, she rocked a crop top, ripped jeans, and white lace-up boots. She boldly declared that her image was as crucial as the air she breathed, even if it was just to impress the delivery guy from the local Chinese joint. When she faced the judges, Louis Walsh, Nicole Scherzinger, and Simon Cowell, the audience couldn't contain their laughter. Chloe, though, wasn't phased. When asked, she coolly informed the judges that her main hobby was partying. No surprise there. With a nod to her idols Beyonce and Shakira, Chloe belted out tunes, starting with Summertime. But when Simon, in all his wisdom, decided she needed a reality check and told her to hush, Chloe wasn't having it. Simon, being Simon, demanded another song. She started singing again, but the judges still weren't impressed. When Simon cut her off again, Chloe wasn't about to let him rain on her parade. She started a full-blown debate with the judges, and at some point, she received some boos from the audience. At this point, she didn't hold back, giving them a piece of her mind. In a twist that even Chloe probably didn't see coming, Simon still gave her a yes, and Nicole Scherzinger followed suit. Who knew chaos could win hearts? Chris Richardson's audition. Things got a little prickly on season six of American Idol during contestant Chris Richardson's audition. Chris sang a rendition of Mayberry, and while the audience seemed to love it, Simon Cowell wasn't exactly clapping along. After the performance, Simon offered some less than enthusiastic feedback. In a critique that could charbroil even the most confident singer, Simon remarked, saying what he heard was a very bland, nasally, tinny kind of singing, which didn't move him one bit. Now Chris wasn't one to back down without a fight. He pushed back, explaining that his nasal style was a deliberate choice. The tension escalated when Chris used the platform to express his condolences to the victims of the recent Virginia Tech shooting. He shared his support for those affected, mentioning he had friends at the university. He cameras then cut to Simon, who unfortunately caught some not-so-great flack for his reaction. In the blink of an eye, viewers saw Simon roll his eyes, and let's just say it wasn't exactly a PR win for the judge. The internet went into overdrive, accusing Simon of being insensitive to Chris's heartfelt message. Simon, trying to do some damage control, scrambled to explain himself. He claimed that he was simply asking Paula, another judge, about Chris's comment regarding his nasally singing. According to Simon, he completely missed Chris's tribute to Virginia Tech. This explanation, however, only dug Simon a deeper hole. Because, well, even if he didn't hear the tribute, it sure looked like he was talking over Chris and completely dismissive of him while Chris was speaking. Not exactly a good look, was it? William Hung. William Hung's energetic and off-key rendition of She Bangs on American Idol Season 3 became an instant internet sensation. However, in today's more sensitive climate, some have criticized the performance for unintentionally reinforcing negative Asian stereotypes. Despite the questionable musicality, there was no denying William's genuine enthusiasm. Watch how it all went down. After the performance, Paula Abdul, known for her nurturing spirit, tried to find the positive. She told William she appreciated his dedication, saying he gave it his all. Simon Cowell, however, was not holding back. He bluntly stated that William's audition was one of the worst they had seen that year. He didn't mince words, calling the entire performance grotesque. Simon wasn't shy about sharing his full critique, adding that William couldn't sing or dance. While his comments were harsh, they weren't entirely untrue. 
William, unfazed by the negativity, simply said he did his best and had no regrets. This earned him some praise from Paula and Randy Jackson. Simon, however, couldn't resist a sarcastic whoopee. He then took aim at William's decision to skip school to audition without his parents' permission. Simon suggested William go and do some homework, implying his priorities were misplaced. Simon wasn't done there. When William admitted to having no professional singing training, Simon feigned surprise. He then asked whether William was truly serious about pursuing a singing career. William assured Simon that he was indeed serious and had put in a lot of effort. Holly Jervis. The X Factor is known for its dramatic moments, but sometimes fireworks aren't necessary for a clash of wills. This was certainly the case with Holly Jervis's now legendary audition on season five. Holly, hailing from the sunny Isle of Wight, walked into the audition room with an air of confidence. She seemed like wasn't there to mess around, and this initially won over the judges. However, her rendition of Big, Blonde, and Beautiful from Hairspray, coupled with her habit of talking a little too much and a little too intensely, ultimately led to a showdown with Simon Cowell. Simon, never one to mince words, bluntly told Holly that her performance simply wasn't good enough. Holly, however, wasn't about to accept this criticism without a fight. She challenged Simon, asking him to consider the opinion of her employers. She argued that they wouldn't keep hiring her if she was truly as bad as he claimed. Simon, not backing down from his position as judge, offered a less than flattering assessment. He implied that Holly wasn't a naturally gifted singer. Despite correctly predicting a clean sweep of no votes from the judges, Holly maintained a relatively composed demeanor as she exited the audition room. However, the facade crumbled once she was out of sight. The cameras captured Holly breaking down in tears, highlighting the emotional roller coaster that comes with chasing your dreams. Angry Ariel, this X Factor audition we are about to talk about, went down in history for all the wrong reasons. From the moment Ariel Burdett marched into the audition room, it was clear this wouldn't be your typical hopeful singer serenade. She wasn't there to win hearts, she was there to demand respect. In a display of surprising boldness or perhaps misplaced confidence, she launched into a tirade, demanding recognition, not as a contestant, but as a human being, not a number. Let's just say, the atmosphere went from tense to even tenser faster than you could say, vocal coach. Things went from bad to delightfully bizarre when Simon declared her audition an absolute nightmare. Instead of accepting the critique with grace, Ariel puffed up her chest and launched into a passionate and frankly confusing defense of her song's academic construction. It was a technical explanation that left the judges blinking in bewilderment, unsure of whether to laugh or run for cover. The tension in the room could have been cut with a butter knife. Finally, Ariel concluded with a parting shot, implying the judges were lacking in intelligence. One can only imagine the thoughts racing through the minds of the judges. Perhaps it was a valiant last stand, perhaps a final act of defiance. Needless to say, her exit was less triumphant farewell and more being escorted out by Simon's security guard. As the door swung shut, one thing was certain. The X Factor stage had just witnessed an audition they wouldn't soon forget. A display of vocal talent and, well, let's just call it a very unique personality. The angry grandma, Edna Moore, an 86-year-old great-grandmother from Chatterton near Oldham, proved that age is just a number when it comes to defending your loved ones. It all went down after her daughter-in-law, Lorraine Moore, a music and piano teacher, took the stage to audition for X Factor in Salford. Lorraine sang the classic Cole Porter tune, Begin the Begin, but instead of applause, she received a withering critique from Simon Cowell. Simon's signature snicker rippled through the air as he dismissed Lorraine's performance as terrible, effectively dashing her dreams of stardom. But Edna, watching from the sidelines, was not about to let Simon get away with his rudeness. This fiery grandma kept her cool the moment Simon started his mockery. She, however, watched, somewhat shockingly, as Simon called Lorraine's performance lifeless and criticizing her supposed lack of personality. But she wasn't about to let anyone, especially Simon Cowell, disrespect her family. Later, Edna barged back into the audition room, her anger a force to be reckoned with. She directly confronted Simon, reminding him in no uncertain terms that he had indeed resorted to childish laughter. Edna then challenged Simon's behavior. She suggested that he reconsider his approach and implied that he believed himself to be superior to others. Edna further stated that she believed Simon's comments were rude and disrespectful. Faced with Edna's righteous fury, even the ever-confident Simon seemed to shrink. After mumbling a meek apology, 
he walked out of the room, leaving Edna victorious. Edna's fiery defense not only protected her daughter-in-law's dignity, but also proved that respect for others is an essential quality, regardless of age or fame. Subscribers pick. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. Today, we are diving into the world of Simon Cowell and his, shall we say, unfiltered brand of feedback. On talent shows, Simon's bluntness is legendary. His critiques can be harsh, sometimes bordering on brutal honesty. Sure, it can get a bit much sometimes, leaving contestants and viewers squirming in their seats. But let's be real. A lot of the time, he is just saying what everyone else is thinking. Maybe that's why these moments become so unforgettable. So what do you think? Is Simon Cowell a harsh but necessary critic? Or does his bluntness go too far sometimes? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Without further ado, let's get back into the video and see what happens when Simon confronts contestants with a bad attitude. Watch what happens. Triple Trouble. Triple Trouble, a hopeful singing trio, took the stage on The X Factor UK in 2009. Their chosen song was a rendition of Rihanna's hit, Umbrella. Unfortunately, their performance left the judges feeling less than impressed. And it wasn't just the singing. One member's fiery attitude and sharp tongue towards the judges turned this audition into a spectacle for all the wrong reasons. Right from the start, it became increasingly clear that Triple Trouble's vision for their musical career might not quite align with reality. As their voices filled the air, Simon Cowell found himself utterly unable to stifle his laughter. Cheryl, on the other hand, darted her gaze around the room, clearly trying to maintain a straight face. Even Lewis Walsh, known for his sometimes questionable enthusiasm, couldn't help but cringe as he watched the performance unfold. Finally, unable to bear it any longer, Simon reached out and cut the music short. The silence that followed was thick with tension. Then, Simon addressed the group by asking if they all had a cold. This didn't go down well with one member, George Gerasimu, whose expression darkened considerably. Simon then continued by referring to the group's performance as a racket. The audience, sensing the awkwardness, laughed along. Triple Trouble, meanwhile, stood awkwardly on stage, their dreams of pop stardom seemingly slipping away with each passing second. George, however, wasn't about to take the criticism lying down. With a voice laced with annoyance, he fired back at Simon. His rant continued, but the growing boos from the audience effectively drowned out his words. Frustration mounting, George resorted to a single angry shout. Unfortunately for him, his attempt to regain control was lost in the roar of the crowd. Defeated and clearly unhappy, Triple Trouble shuffled off the stage after George's outburst. Backstage, the tension remained palpable. As he stormed through the corridors, George slammed the microphone down onto the floor. He then later declared that Simon was stupid, though it was unclear if this was meant to be a comment on Simon's musical taste or simply George's sour mood. Ablisa, the talent showcase platform is a place where dreams are launched, where raw talent is polished into pop stardom. Or at least, that's the dream. But as anyone who has tuned in knows, it can also be a crucible of broken nerves, shattered confidence, and in some cases, even broken friendships. Take the case of Abby Johnston and Lisa Parker, two best friends who took to the stage in Birmingham, hoping to wow the judges with their combined talent. But things started to unravel faster than a poorly knitted scarf on a windy day. This was about to become a classic case of when Simon confronts contestants with a bad attitude. Watch what happens. Even before the singing began, Lisa decided to crack a joke at the expense of Judge Lewis Walsh. Lisa said that Abby had a crush on him, but Louis was quite a bit older than her. Needless to say, the audience found this more cringeworthy than comical, and even Louis seemed a little flustered. This awkward attempt at humor set the tone for the rest of the audition. When Simon inquired if they were friends or sisters, things got even more confusing. A mini-argument erupted between the girls as they tried and failed to explain their family connection. Their response was a confusing jumble, and it seemed even they weren't quite sure how to describe their relationship. The whole exchange left the audience in stitches, much to Lisa's chagrin. She wasn't too happy about being the center of attention, and let the crowd know with a rather impolite, shut up. The girls eventually shuffled off stage, only to return a moment later, seemingly ready to give it another shot. Then came the singing. Let's just say their renditions of Don't Stop Believin' by Journey and Shane Ward's That's My Goal fell somewhere between karaoke night gone wrong and a herd of cats auditioning for a musical. It wasn't pretty. Following this, 
Well, performance, Simon told the girls that in his opinion, they had the worst attitude of any contestants he had ever met on any of these shows. That comment certainly didn't help their already fragile confidence. As if things couldn't get any worse, Natalie Imbruglia chimed in with her honest and perhaps slightly brutal opinion, stating that the performance wasn't great. Lisa, clearly not taking criticism well, asked who Natalie even was. This unexpected outburst seemed to genuinely shock Abby, who responded with a rather physical reaction by elbowing Lisa in the face. Stunned and clearly upset, Abby stormed off the stage, leaving Lisa to stand there awkwardly. Not to be outdone, Lisa responded with a defiant middle finger salute towards the judges before following Abby's lead and exiting the stage. And with this, the audition ended on a less than harmonious note. One can only imagine the car ride home must have been a tense affair, and it's safe to say their friendship likely didn't survive this X-Factor fiasco. The Singing Souls So far, we have seen singing duos and trios walk onto the stage with dreams of harmony and end up in a cacophony of missed notes and hurt feelings. Well, next up is a trio called The Singing Souls, who are about to prove that even lifelong friends can't always find musical bliss together. The Singing Souls consisted of Louise, Tasha, and Hannah. They were three students and besties hailing from Wiltshire and ready to take the music world by storm. At least, that was the plan. Things got off to a bit of a rocky start when they introduced themselves. Simon, ever the comedian, playfully pretended to mishear their name, calling them the Singing Trolls instead. Things got a little more heated when Simon playfully asked if they aimed to be as big as the Spice Girls. Hannah, ever the confident one, apparently took this as a challenge, declaring that anyone could outsell the iconic girl group. Now confidence is great, but sometimes it needs to be balanced with a touch of, well, reality. Unfortunately, their rendition of Evanescence's Taking Over Me fell a bit short of chart-topping material. Let's just say the notes weren't exactly taking over anyone in a good way. It wasn't long before Simon, unable to contain himself any longer, slammed his red buzzer, effectively shutting down their performance. Amanda and Piers weren't far behind. As the chorus of disapproval grew, Hannah, perhaps feeling a little defensive, launched a rather unexpected challenge at Simon by asking if he would like to come on stage and sing. This wasn't exactly the most graceful way to handle criticism, and it turned their audition from slightly off-key to infamous in a heartbeat. Hannah wasn't done there, though. She continued to argue with the judges, throwing out a few more, perhaps not so well thought out comments about the Spice Girls. In the end, their audition didn't quite go as planned. The dream of pop stardom faded faster than the last echo of their off-key notes, and the singing souls were politely shown the exit door. Keith Bucolaire. American Idol season two wasn't exactly short on memorable moments, and some weren't exactly for the right reasons, the audition of one contestant, Keith Bucolaire, became infamous for its uniqueness. Now, auditions are a gamble. Hopeful step onto the stage, voices trembling and hearts pounding, with dreams of superstardom dancing in their heads. Keith, however, seemed to be on a different page entirely. He walked onto the stage with the confidence of a seasoned performer, ready to unleash his vocal talents on the judges. His first song was a rendition of Like a Virgin, and let's just say, Madonna might not have recognized her own song. Things went from unusual to downright bizarre when Keith followed up with, I want to dance with somebody. While some might have suspected this was an elaborate joke, Keith's seriousness made it clear he was genuinely invested in his performance. The judges, however, were less than impressed. With a grimace that could curdle milk, Simon declared that Keith had surpassed the previous year's contender for worst singer in America. He even went so far to suggest Keith might be vying for the title of worst singer in the world. Keith wasn't exactly thrilled with this assessment. A disagreement, polite at first and then escalating rapidly, erupted between him and Simon. Simon, never one to mince words or hold back a cutting remark, pointed out the sheer improbability of anyone on earth singing quite like Keith. He bluntly advised Keith to abandon any aspirations of a singing career altogether. While Simon's honesty might have been brutal, it was clear Keith's performance wasn't exactly idol material. Keith's shot at American Idol glory ended as abruptly as his off-key rendition of Like a Virgin. He shuffled off the stage, dreams of superstardom replaced with a clear understanding that the road to pop stardom might be a little longer than he anticipated. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.